Hey everyone and welcome back to the Newcastle Jets in the AFL, now in League One after gaining promotion last season and after a slow start in the season, a loss against Wigan Athletic and a draw against Crew Alexandria, we're looking to pick up our first three points of the league season coming off the back of that win in the Carabao Cup against Oxford United and you see here the ref puts his whistle to his mouth, blows it up for what can only be a handball, I assume. And so we go to the replay and darling, oh my God, what's it done? <laughs> Maybe it come off his elbow there. So we step up. We know we don't have a great record with penalties, but Pena does the business. Things you love to see. I tell you, I get the absolute sweats up every time we get a penalty because I'm Absolutely no. I think I'm about a 10% chance of scoring rather than being a 90% chance. As we have an excellent chance there to go 2 0 up. Becker puts it the wrong side of the goal, but actually, he turned out he was offside, so it wasn't the end of the world. As we see here, just before half time, Thurgate storming into the box, and what a finish by Gussie! Oh my god! absolutely slams it into the goal and I tell you what Gussie going down injured towards the end of last the back end of last season was just so critical on our indifferent run of form because he was such an integral part of our midfield chipping in with a fair few goals as well and without him we just seemed to fall, fall to pieces a little bit but we're not falling to pieces against MK Dons here and you see here, 75 minutes into the game, the King of Cameroon, nice header there, 3-0 up, and surely here, love this celebration here by the King of Cameroon, 3-0 up, we wouldn't give it away this time, and the score would remain 3-0, really pleasing to pick up our first three points of the season, you know, I don't think we were that bad, the scoreline kind of flattered Wigan a little bit, as you see, we move into the second game of the season at home against Blackpool. I think Blackpool are one of the teams to beat here, and you can't go giving the ball away like that. Opens it up, and oh, I don't know how we got away with that one, to be honest. Yeah, I think Blackpool is going to be one of the teams to beat in the league this season. So we need to take every opportunity we can, and the ball... Just comes flying back out off the post. That would have put us 1-0 up. You see here, twisting and turning. Try and get a shot away. Maxwell comes. A pretty regulation save here as we move towards the end of the first half. The score would remain nil all. Yeah, so just want to reiterate from our previous episode that I think a push for the playoffs isn't out of the realm as a possibility. Top half of the table... Bare minimum is what I want from our first season in League One. We've bring in some new faces. Definitely not saying no to bring any more new faces before the end of the transfer period, as we see here, Duncan out smartly to get down at the feet of the striker. But late in the game, Duncan, 20 minutes to go. Oh, jeez. He's as good as ever. I said in the last episode, we'll probably have to look for someone a little bit better eventually, but not at this point. As we see, Boomal has a strike on goal. And this is another game here, kind of similar to the one against Crew, where I just I just thought we created a lot, but couldn't get the final goal. And, and in the 91st minute, heartbreak at McDonald Jones Stadium. It seems like I say that a lot in these videos. Oh, but that was against one of the better teams in the league. Put up such a strong performance and not come away with the chocolates was awfully disappointing. Move into our next game away from home against Forest Green. Also promoted last year from League Two. So this is a game, if we want to push for the playoffs, that we need to be beating but they go ahead just 13 minutes into the game. Sweeney with a bang and finish. Not much Jack O could do in goals here. But I think we're, we're, we're going to be made of some pretty steely stuff here. And just before halftime, I said it earlier in the episode, Gussie gets himself into the box and he scores some goals. Number 32. Love that as well. Shaquille O'Neal, the big man from points bet himself. And... I tell you what, 
Oh, Elsie, into the squad. He was he was named to the team of the season last year, but he hasn't had much of a run this season for us so far. And he gives away the handball. Not not much he could do there. One all just before half time. And we see, as usual, the AI does the business from the penalty spot. I don't know what it is. Oh, I just can't, oh, you know, I was tempted to stay in the middle there, but at the last minute decided I wanted to go, and, and they just finished it off beautifully, and early doors in the second half, some beautiful work there, 3-1 up, and, oh, I've got to admit, I wasn't so happy. Like I said earlier, this is a game we really want to be winning, and, like, I keep repeat, I don't think we're playing that bad as we see Gussie. The boys in on the goals so far early this season, making up for lost time. But yeah, I did. Oh, I don't think we're playing that badly. But at the same time, we're not picking up the points we need. So once again here, you see the AI knock it around beautifully. And we get a bit unlucky there. The ball get, goes into our defender. It rebounds straight to the striker who finished it. Stevens there himself. And isn't he happy? 4-2. Towards the end of the game, Jacko comes up with a big save, but it wouldn't really mean anything. Just save a bit of face there for us. No one likes to leak five goals. If you see here, we go into the after-game press conference and we talk a little bit about, bit about Gussie and how important he is to us. And I'm just thinking we need to add a little bit more depth to the midfield. We don't have a lot of coin in the transfer budget, so we go looking for a free agent and we find Barrios. So hopefully he's going to come into the squad, add a little bit of depth. He may be a starter. I'm not 100% sure, but we're going to give him a run as we move into the second round of the Carabao Cup here against Rochdale. Fully rotated squad. Just mixed it up. Like I said, if we win, we win this season in the Carabao Cup. You know, if we pick up a big big team in one of the latter rounds, you know, I'd be happy for that. But if we don't win, it's not the end of the world. But we would get off to a pretty good start here as we see Becker. Oh, the Georgian. I tell you what, he's making a strong case to be part of our regular first 11. And I tell you, Boom was just going to play off the bench, I think, this season as we try and play some of our, our young kids. Another one here, Knowles from the Youth Academy, putting us 2 0 up. And wouldn't you believe it? Oh, we just couldn't get there. But the ref puts his whistle to his mouth, pulls it up. I think he's pulled it up for the goalkeeper throwing as he's throwing the ball out. It, it's left the 18-yard box in his hand. So the ref's pulled him up for the handball, and we have a shot from the free kick. And we didn't really get too close, to be honest, as we move into the second half. 2-0 up. Ed Gibbons from the Youth Academy makes... Uh, scores a nice goal there, and we are 3-0 up, 52 minutes into the game. I'll tell you what, he's a young kid from the Youth Academy. He's doing a few things. I'm not sure how much game time he's going to get. We might want to put him out on loan and then see what we get back at the end of the season. But i tell you what here, Becker, honestly, he's brought his goal-scoring boots to the game here tonight, and we win the game convincingly 4-0. Oh, I've got to admit, I'm really happy with that. I mean, I'm happy to win these Carabao Cup games, but, you know, I'd like to see us picking up a few more points in the league. As you see here, after five games, it doesn't look like we're look, things are looking all that flash as we're scrolling down the table and we still can't find us, still can't find us, still can't find us. And finally, the first relegation spot, you find Newcastle Jets. As we move forward to our next game, and oh no, I'm starting to get the horrors. It's a pre-game press conference. And I tell you what, even worse, it's against the ba the Bantams from Bradford. And we all know what happened last time. They absolutely annihilated us. 5-0. My worst ever defeat as the Newcastle Jets manager, and 22 minutes into the game. Oh, geez, we got lucky there. 
I don't know if our luck could hold out too much longer, though. 35 minutes into the game, some beautiful skill moves. You just can't get the ball off them. Oh, but Jacko tips it onto the post, and we do get a little bit lucky. I tell you what, things you love to see, as we see here, moving the ball around the box, and oh, it's our turn, and it's their turn for their goalkeeper to come up with a big save. We put it into McGowan, and they come up with another big save. The set-piece specialist McGowan, he scores a lot of goals for us. Wouldn't trade him for anyone. Greatest free agent signing so far in the early stages of this Jets career mode. And right on halftime, check it out. The top left-hand corner again. One minute of added time. Two minutes and 54 seconds into that one minute of added time. And Bradford take the lead. And you see there a heavy challenge. Now player Olsen goes down into the box. No penalty from the referee. And in another game where I feel we haven't done that badly, we've lost 1-0. And I tell you what, we've got to ask ourselves a few questions, I think, because we're just not scoring enough goals in the league. So we moved to transfer deadline day. And like I said, we needed to make a few more signings. And so I go in. We need to open up the defences a little bit more so we find on the free agents list Carlos Castro from Chile. So we pick him up, reject an offer for Dane Ingham. We reject an offer for Jack Duncan. He ain't going anywhere. And we reject an offer for Hoffman. You know, Hoffman, he's a club stalwart. We really want him to stay at the club till the end of his career as we go through the top 10 transfers of the off-season in FIFA 22 here. And I think of right, I'm pretty sure he moved in the previous transfer window. And like I said earlier, like FIFA's just got this... There's just They need to tone down the transfers. They're just too weird, as you see there. A quick look at our transfers. And then we move in to have a look at our scout reports. And I tell you what... Have a look at this guy, Douglas Duff, 67 rated CDM. My first thoughts were, put Anchorman on him, get that weak foot going, and then we move right below him. I don't know what's going on with the water in Scotland, but Dave Gordon, 62 rated. And I'm going to turn him into a cam, only take two weeks, and... We're just adding squad depth. I got those players off the transfer list. So we have one final look at the league table. And it's pretty horrible to look at. But yeah, I got those players off the transfer list to add depth. And then the scout report comes back with those gangsters from Scotland. Things you love to see. I'll catch you guys next time.